This is a live recording of a light bulb that has been produced before so-called planned obsolescence. This lamp has been on for the past 119 years. Hello, I'm Lukas Paltnavicius, I'm a master's degree uh, student at Wageningen University in Research and welcome to the episode about circular economy. In the previous episode about bio-based sciences and economy, we mentioned that nowadays our economy is powered by linear principles and all the raw materials are being used only once. To reduce finite resources consumption, depletion and to minimize negative climate impact, we need to transform our economy from linear to circular economy. Researcher Kircher has done an analysis of 114 definitions in research articles that they are trying to conceptualize circular economy. Finally, he defined circular economy as an economic system that replaces the end-of-life concept with reducing alternatively reusing, recycling and recovering materials in production, distribution and consumption processes. However, later in the paper it states that circular economy means many different things to many different people and there is no single undisputed authority to define what it really matters. So there is still much to be done for, from the research side and to find the common grounds that would suit everybody's perspective while talking about circular economy. However, the practitioners are not waiting for these def definitions uh, to be created. They're defining and they're trying to understand how do they can actually make it happen. So let's see several examples of how circular economy becomes a business case. Circular agriculture farm in Latvia where 1,000 dairy cows are being kept to produce biogas. Then the leftover digested is used as a fertilizer and the surplus heat generated by the engine is used to warm up the water, later producing eel and caviars. Fungi are the circular engine of nature and company Milium developed a clean production method where thread-like root structure of mushrooms are used for quality fabrics. Mudjeans are the world's first circular denim brand. After 12 months paying monthly fee, you can keep your jeans, swap them for a new pair or send them back. After return, mud jeans start the process of making new jeans from the old jeans, keeping the materials in a closed loop. Or Fairphone, where innovative phones are designed and produced to be long-lasting, has a transparent supply chain and results in a minimal environmental footprint. Also, they are introducing modular phone parts for upgrading your device. Next to all this, Philips sells you lumen per square meter instead of the light bulbs, therefore lamps last longer. Or coffee form creates reliable cups from coffee grounds and that's how completing the cycle. And of course there are many more examples. This transition requires an interdisciplinary approach while combining commercial knowledge with technical skills and taking into account environmental considerations. While it still sounds broad and abstract, there are already tools how to make s steps forward. So, for example, systems thinking, life cycle assessment, agent-based modeling, and other quantitative tools to measure the circularity gap. So, what about students? What do they do during the circular economy class? Besides all the lectures, uh, I participate in one of the case studies related with life cycle assessment, and we focus on single-use plastic for uh, the packaging industry. And what would be the advice for future students of a course coordinator of circular economy? Well, to be very critical on what they hear and be combine technically orientation with uh, down-to-earth practicalities. And expect no solution, no quick fix, but I actually expect that this is a generational thing. By the way, if you would like to dig deeper and to learn more about circular economy, check out my conversation with Stefano Pascucci. Thank you for watching this episode and remember that giant problems can be solved with tiny steps.